Welcome, guys, to our team call for Tuesday, March 28th. I'm so excited. We have a really special guest on tonight. She is a seven-star diamond coach, two-time elite. She's a wife. She's been married for a long time time guys like this girl knows how to do marriage she has three beautiful children and she is also the extroverted version of me <laughs> so you guys know me she's just like me except she's loud um yeah. but before i hand it over to monica who's going to be talking to us about the different levels of leadership i want to remind you guys super saturday is just a couple of days away this is a big deal guys Monica, I'm sending two of my girls over to you. Yay! Okay. They got the tickets already? I hope so, because tomorrow's the deadline for the uh, raffle for headshots, which is a big deal. That is a big deal, because then you yeah. look official on your social media. Heck yes! And we, so make sure to get registered by tomorrow. Tomorrow noon is the deadline. Yeah. And our Super Saturday here in New York City is with Carl Deichler, El Jefe. And we also have Scotty Hobbs coming by. And guys... Our very own Darlene is hosting. We have to go support Darlene. Yay! That's awesome. You go, girl. Yeah. And uh, remember, guys, we have a couple of days left to hit Success Club. We can do that, guys. There's people that need our help. There's people that need our change. So go out there and just talk to more people. Make it happen. Be convicted in your passion for what we do. You know, um, Christina, Monica's coach, was the one that started the I Am Team Beachbody movement. And that is powerful, you guys. I challenge all of you guys, make yourselves your own Transformation Tuesday and talk about what this business has done for you with your own I Am Team Beachbody post. I did mine a little while ago. You guys can go check it out to see the format, but you can just search the hashtag and see the movement that this mm. has become. So Absolutely. get out there, guys, and show them what we're about. And with that, Monica... Go for it, girl. All right. Well, I see so many familiar faces. This feels like home already. You guys are like my second team. Um, thank you for having me tonight. Uh, if we haven't met yet, Monica Lopez. Um, I've been a coach now for six years, almost. July will be six years. I actually retired myself almost four years ago. July will also make four years um, that I retired myself as a paralegal and came home to work this business full time. Um, like Audrey mentioned, mother of three, I am a hot, hot mess, but somehow, you know, how you wake up every day thinking, how the heck am I going to get it all done? But you figure it out, you make it happen. Um, so I get you, I get you right now. If you feel like you're on the struggle bus every day, you're like, how am I going to get this done? Um, that kind of never goes away, but that's the exciting part. You're always stretching yourself in this business and you're always, you know, finding new ways to make it happen. So tonight I have a really important um, topic to share with you guys. And Audrey and I were talking about where you guys are at as a team and what are the things that you're struggling with. And I think that um, tonight what my goal is going to be or what I hope for you to walk away feeling like is to kind of actually relieve some pressure from you. Okay, to not make you feel so overwhelmed. And I think a lot of times coaches get overwhelmed in this business because they think that they have more responsibility than they actually do. And what I mean by that is that we see teams start to develop. And if you're not careful, it could be a team where there's a boss instead of a leader, right? And then we work, we, we're working in this employee mindset where we're looking at it, perhaps our PS coach or, um, or the, the star diamonds above, and we're looking up to them to tell us what to do. And unless they tell us, we're not giving ourselves permission to do it. And so that's really an employee mindset. That's not being a CEO. And it's not just a cliche saying that, well, hold on, baby. Mommy, is, you need to go to bed, okay? Okay, I know, but go to bed, okay? Daddy's coming right now. Um, it's not just a cliche saying that you are a CEO. You really are. When you signed up to be a coach, you got this shiny, brand new business that you can create and make into your own and no matter how fast or slow you decide to go you are in charge and so I think a lot of times coaches come in and they have this employee mindset that they're, they're waiting to be told what to do okay so it's really important it's really important as you become a coach you search own your role okay own your business and also set that example set that tone for the rest of your team as you begin to grow it. Because what you want is a culture of independence where each person is owning their business, okay? But we know, we know in this, in, in, in Team Beach Body, 
It really is that. It's teamwork at its finest. You cannot get to the next level without people, right? You can't get to the next level on a commission-based business without people that you're helping. You can't start to build a team and see that residual income come in until you have a team of people, right? And you can't build an organization, a tribe, a, a you know, a, a, a huge team like Team Eagle and like where I'm from, Beagle Nation, like, you know, our, our founders. Um, we can't build that unless, you know, we have people. And so there's, there, there, I wanted tonight talk about leadership because that's going to be the backbone to all of this. I want to ask you guys a question. By the raise of your hands, how many of you right now have between five to ten challengers that you're working with? At least five to ten challengers. Okay. Now keep your hand raised if you've ever felt overwhelmed with just those five to ten people. <laughs> Keep your hand raised if you said to yourself, oh my God, if this is only five to 10, how am I going to create this business that I see other coaches have, right? Same thing with coaches. How many of you have 10 to, five, 10 to 15 coaches on your team already? And you're saying to yourself, oh my God, if I, if I can barely juggle this, how am I going to build an organization that is, you know, 500, 1,000 coaches strong? I remember feeling that way until I started to get the right training and get myself in the right mindset and understand that the key to all of that is leadership. Now, Audrey, when she introduced what we're going to talk about tonight, there was a, I'm going to play, I'm going to play a small twist in the words that she used. She said the levels of leadership and what I'm going to share with you guys tonight, by the way, was not created by me. This was actually shared in a diamond um, event that we had here. Ooh, I think like two years ago. And this chart, this information that I'm going to share with you guys today was actually created by Christina Delgado. And I remember being at her house because I go to her house all the time. We work on things together and she was developing the system. And I remember her saying it, it's not levels. And she was just like thinking, thinking, because it's not about levels, right? Leadership's not a title. It's not a rank. It's, it's, it's action. So she's like, levels is not the right word. And I remember her struggling with that. And then she stopped and she says, you know what it is, Monica? It's layers. It's layers, one on top of the other is what's going to create the magic, all right? So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. I am going to screen share here for a second. But tonight, we're going to be talking about the layers of leadership versus the levels, all right? Now, like I said, the reason being is because one is not important, more important than the other. Kind of like, let's think about this in the realm of our, um, our fitness, Okay. We know that you cannot just work out to your blue in the face and then expect to get massive results. We know that Shakeology plays a role. We also know that you can't just drink Shakeology and magically live, lose 50 pounds. We know that you gotta get in there and get a sweat in. And we know that you could drink Shakeology and work out to your blue in the face, but if you're eating crap fried foods every single day, then the, all the other work that you're putting in is almost moot, right? It's kind of canceled out. And so all three components kind of layer on top of each other. They all play a role. Well, same thing when it comes to running your business, right? And leading with leadership. Because the truth of the matter is, just like John Maxwell says, everything rises and falls on leadership. And whether today you're on this call, you may have signed up last week as a coach, or if you've been a coach for a year, two years, or a couple months, wherever, wherever, wherever you fall, you have to start practicing and acting as a leader right now because everything is going to rise and fall on that. It's a mindset. It's action. Like I said, it's not a title. It's not a rank. It's not something that you're going to earn. It's something that you're going to learn to be now because that is going to create the success in your business. All right. So let's talk about that. The three layers of leadership in your beach party business. The first layer is leading yourself, okay? This is where we're talking about, you've got your three vital behaviors or four vital behaviors down. Your personal development, your proof, Beach Body Works, right? So you, you have already nailed down your story with, with product, with financial. And again, if you just signed as a coach last week and you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't have a financial you know, story. Well, start using the coaches around you until you do. And then when you earn that first paycheck, I remember earning my first paycheck and remember it being like 50 something dollars and saying, this is a tank of gas, you know, this is a tank of gas that I did not once have. And I learned to celebrate even the smaller victories, smaller, but in reality, those were making big changes in my life. 
and they were starting to, you know, there were cookie crumbs of, of my business coming together. And in fact, those are the ones that are actually more impactful. That is more impactful than someone saying, I bought a house in the Florida Keys. Because that seems company. unrealistic. It seems far-fetched. I think somebody's it's unmuted. Doing, they say, hey. I think somebody's unmuted. Just make sure to mute yourself so I don't get any feedback. Um, so product-based story and financial-based story. And then you also have an experience-based story. Okay. You have nailed down these three. Because these are going to be... This is, you know, when I talk about coaching with, with prospects and, and, and people that are thinking about starting their business and they have like this hesitation, one of the biggest things is they think that they're not qualified. And I love to tell people what qualifies you, the one and only thing that qualifies you to be a Beachbody coach is that you have your story. You have your experience. You have your testimony. That's it. Well, you don't need to be a personal trainer. You don't need to be a nutritionist. You don't need to be any kind of expert because we've got those already right we, we are in business they are our, we're in partnership with experts our job is to be the face of the business the testimony the the, the conviction behind it and you got to make sure that you have your stories nailed down and you know how to share that with others so that's layer one also you've honed in on inviting social media you realize social media may not be everything in this business, but to me, this is how I always relate social media. It's like going fishing without a fishing rod. Could you catch fish with your bare hands? Yeah, it's gonna take you a long time. But why not use an amazing tool that'll make you way more effective, a lot faster, and reach a lot more fish than, than you know, just one with your hands in, in, the, in your area. Same concept. Use the tool that we have to, to leverage your business to get out there and share it and meet new people. This is network marketing for a reason. It's a people business, not a product-driven business. So use social media and make sure that you're getting out there and you've got your three to five posts happening. Your communication skills, okay? You know how to talk to someone. You know how to dig it deep into someone saying, okay, well, I'm interested in T25 or 21 Day Fix. Can you tell me more? Shakeology. You know how to talk about these products where you're not vomiting beach body, but that you're giving enough information to help this person and lead them on their journey and that you know your niche and your brand. Okay. These are things that this is the first layer. This is you right now. This is your business. You've achieved, you've learned to achieve success club. Okay. And you have recognized that if you're not hitting success club, I know this is going to be harsh for a lot of people on here right now, but it's the absolute truth. If you're not hitting success club, you don't have a business because that means you're not getting out there and helping people. Okay. So a person before they can help anybody else, they have to know how to themselves help get out there and help people and achieve success. Club. They recruit new coaches. They've understood now I've helped people get healthy and fit. Now I want to convert them to lifers, whether they land in my organization as a discount coach at the bare minimum, or if they become business builders or hobby coaches, wherever they land, that you understand the conversion is what's going to build your business in the long run. It's going to build that residual income. You're hosting challenge groups. You're not waiting for your upline to do that. That's you. It's happening to you. You're owning it. You're engaging in power, power hours daily. Okay. Doesn't mean it has to be one specific hour. It could be broken up into whatever your day looks like. Only you know when you can fit it in, but that it's happening. That you've set aside time for your business. You understand the compensation plan. You guys you cannot rely on your upline to teach you the compensation plan, to teach you the ins and outs of your business. In order to grow your business, you need to know your business. And that's on you. That's part of leadership. First person you need to lead is yourself. You understand team volume bonuses. You understand com uh, commission. You understand um, rank. And you know where you're going. You know basic coach placement. You have what we talked about a second ago. Develops a CEO mindset. You're not an employee waiting to be told what to do, but you're actually out there owning it and developing your own ideas, developing your own systems, and making it work for you. You're engaging with your team daily. You attend events, kind of like Super Saturday that Audrey just talked about. You, oops, sorry. You realize the importance of being there. You make it non negotiable. Guys, I've been a coach for six years. I've never missed not one Super Saturday. Not one because I know how important they are. 
I have not missed one summit since being a coach, okay? Since every single summit since becoming a coach. Luckily, I signed in July, so I've missed that first year <laughs> when you're really not even sure if you belong there, and I didn't start until the following year. Um, but I know the importance of it, and it's actually where the aha moment happened for me uh, personally and my husband. I remember taking him to the first summit. John Maxwell was there, and I think Audrey and I talk about it all the time. That was her first summit too, and that is where really my vision for what I was doing, my husband kind of aligned with it, and it's really what took us off. I came back from that trip, and, and we, he looked at me in the plane. I'll never forget, and he's like, you're made for this. If those people could do it. You could do it. Like, you need to quit your job. Like, we start, we start planning to get you out of your job and go all into this. So that's how important events are. And you recognize that in the first layer of leadership, leading yourself and knowing where you need to be to, st to create momentum and growth in your business. You establish boundaries. You have business hours. And you respect your own business hours. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're just getting started and you're attached to this 24-7, it's going to start creating a problem for you. You want Beachbody to give you life, not be your life. Okay? So make sure you're setting your business hours. Your schedules are not... You, your schedule's non-negotiable and you're out there helping people, all right? So that's layer one. I went really in depth on that one and I wanna tell you why. Because the layer one is the absolute most important layer. Number one, you have no business if you don't have layer one. Number two, you will have no team if you don't have layer number one. And number three, if you don't have layer number one, you're never gonna reach two and you're never gonna reach three. Okay, it is the foundation. It's what everything lies on. You, okay, being able to lead yourself and be disciplined enough so that you can pave the way for others, so that you cannot push them to do things, right? Nobody here wants to be a boss. What we want is to inspire others to move. We want to pull others to do something, emotionally pull them to do it. And part of that is leading from the front and being the example. That is how people are going to look at you and say, you know what? I want to be like Audrey. You know, I want to be like Gabby. I want to be like Saudi. I want to be like Mickey. Like, you know, all the leaders in your team that you may look and say, you know what? They're my North Star. I see what's possible because I see them every single month hitting success club, no matter how many months they've been in, 40 something months in sex success club, but they make it happen. They find new people. They're constantly building their team and they are showing you what is possible. They live in layer one always before they could even hit two and three layer one is constant okay so let's talk about layer two and that's when you start to build a team you start leading your team and this is where you start to dig deep into their whys and understand how you can motivate them now notice it's not you try to convince them why but you help them discover why they want it their motivations Okay, that is the key because you can't drag anyone in this business. And believe me, I've had my fair share of trying to do that. It's exhausting and you will no longer enjoy this business. What your job is to help figure out what makes people tick, your coaches, and take that time to talk to them. You, you have a system, you have a calendar, you have your team page started. Even if you've got one coach underneath you, guess what? Your team, start there. You're getting out there and you're, ho you're hosting monthly trainings, whatever they may be, whether it's a one-hour social media training or you do a 15-day new coach training. But you're getting out there and you're being the face of your business. You're hosting get start, Getting Start Rights, GSRs, right? You're not leaving it up to your upline to get your coaches started right. You are the face of your business and you're taking these coaches and now helping them. You're creating opportunities for growth, which means that you, you're not relying now on your uplines sneak peeks or business opportunity calls or any of those kinds of things you're hosting them you're the face of the business so that you can start to help the next leaders emerge right and then you're getting out there and you're creating the successful culture recognition all those things that again it's the next level up it's the next layer up when you start to build a team you know how to teach the compensation plan right so layer one was knowing your business to grow it now layer two is knowing how to teach it and be able to, you know, one of the key things I learned when I started my business was I remember feeling so overwhelmed because I thought I had to know everything. And we don't need to know everything as leaders, but what we do need to know is where to find the answer to everything. So be knowledgeable on that, knowledgeable on where to direct people and where to go or where to 
perhaps you know explain strategies and understand placements so that you could help your and assist your coaches. So that is your job as a leader in phase two and layer two. You are proactive versus reactive, right? So you're looking ahead of the game. You're working on the offense versus on the defense. You rally your team. Now it's not just you attending these events that you know are important for you, but you're realizing, damn, I got to get my coaches there with me. I need them to feel what I'm feeling. I need us to grow together. I need us to have this united vision. And you know that that's important and that happens at events. So you get, you're rallying your team. Leader. You understand and are aware of deadlines, right? And you're keeping your team in the know. You control your emotions and you understand trends and issues, right? So you're not freaking out when volume's low because you know the following week is probably going to be higher than normal and you understand the ebbs and flow. That's layer two, guys. That's leading your team. Now three is when you start leading leaders, right? And that's like, you know, that's, I think that's the motherland. When you're able to now say, okay, you know what? I've developed another one of me. Someone that's out there, independent, running a team, and we're sharing a vision that we, is very clear for everyone. We've established a team culture. We know how to generate momentum. We're out there giving opportunities now for new people to shine, right? Kind of like their Lenny hosting Super Saturday. That's amazing. Big, big deal. You're creating opportunities for now new leaders to rise. Um, ethical, moral compass of Team Beachbody. You understand the big picture. You influence action. You invest your time in people. You also learn to start digging levels deep. This might be a little bit of advanced for some people on this call, but these are things that I want to start planting seeds in your head because I want you to understand that that's what's coming. That's what's coming. Um, but all these things, you earn respect for your team, right? You're, there's no way people are going to respect your coach and your organizations are going to respect you and what you say if you're not doing it yourself. Hit success club, but I'm not hitting success club. Drink shakeology, but I'm not drinking shakeology. Get out there and host business opportunities, but I'm not doing it. It's earning and keeping respect within your organization and throughout your team, okay? You go above and beyond, and you know what issues are important and what is not worth, you know, um, losing sleep over. And so those are the three layers of leadership. You guys see where it becomes one on top of the other, but where it's absolutely imperative that you never never leave layer one you never stop like what we like to say working in phase one because what's going to drive your team what's going to drive your leaders is your action that is what's going to inspire them to keep going they're going to see you and they're going to realize that they're you are in the trenches with them and that starts from like i said when you have no coaches on your team right now or you've got an organization of 50 100 coaches strong you know this is something that never goes away and this is also something that you could start implementing right away there's no rank there's no income and there's no position that needs to be given to you for you to start acting and acting out these these kinds of behaviors as a leader right so does that i hope it makes sense to you guys does it i can't really see everybody but give me a thumbs up if it makes sense and this was helpful Awesome, awesome. All right, so one more thing I want to talk to you guys about. And this was also shared with me at a leadership, uh, I think it was like two years ago, Audrey, I don't know if you remember it. It was Michelle Myers that shared this, and I thought it was beautifully stated and expressed because, like I said, a lot of times I remember feeling like I was like, well, you know, all these people's success – I felt like it was on my shoulders. I felt like I had to teach them everything. I, you know, I felt like I had to give them everything. I felt like I had to do, you know, all these phone calls and, and then start from square one whenever I signed a new coach. And I just realized that being systematic was the best way to go. And you guys have a lot of systems in place already because I know, Audrey, I've seen your guys' website. Like, hello, LuminousNation.com. Her and her ladies have done an incredible job with that. You guys have systems. There's absolutely no reason for this to be a team full of blame. But this be blame is exponential system to me was just stated it perfectly. And I want to share it with you guys so that you understand this and you can share this with your team. The first level is I do, uh, not I do do, that's <laughs> totally a typo. <laughs> I do do. I do, you watch, we talk. So we sign a new coach. Perhaps it's in a challenge group. You're hosting the challenge group. There, you're doing 
your new coach is watching, and then you get together and talk about, okay, this is how I did that. This is the system I use. Maybe it's a business opportunity. Maybe it's a new coach training. But they're in there, and now they're playing the role of, I'm learning from you, you're teaching me, okay? But there's going to come a point that they're going to have to rise to the next level. And now that we do together, so maybe we host a challenge group together, maybe host a training together, and then we talk about it, okay? And I help you. Okay, you know what? This is where you could do this to be a little bit more efficient, or here's where this, this is what you can implement so that you're not overwhelmed, and this is a way to save some time if you're still working, and yada, yada, yada. We do, we talk. But then there comes a point where you gotta kick them out of that nest and onto the next. Now you do. I'm gonna watch you as your coach, but you're gonna do first, and then we'll let's talk about it, okay? Anything that you need help with, anything that I could um, help you um, figure out or do better, and you know, like we just talked about, um, be able to, to be more efficient. But there comes a point where you have to stop relying on your upline, and it's you doing and carrying out everything that you've been taught, right, by their actions. And then the last is now you're doing this, right? You become that expert, you become that leader, and now you're teaching someone else and someone else is watching you and it becomes a very beautiful, blameless cycle. But this is how we build a culture of independence where each person truly feels like the CEO of their business, truly feels like they're owning it. And that's where, where everybody will feel empowered and in control. And that's where you see people really shine. But one thing always remains consistent, and I will say it when I've said it once and I'll say it again, is that we can never leave layer one. And that is meeting ourselves because that's where everything rises and falls with our leadership and what we do. So that's it, folks. That's what I had for you guys. And I can, don't worry about it. I can send you guys the, um, the chart if you need it. I can set it to audio, you can have it posted into your team page, but are there any questions that I could answer? Well, first of all, I want to thank you. That <laughs> is really, really good. It's amazing to be able to see it laid out like that. Um, what I love about it is that, gosh, we can never make anybody do anything in this business. And leading is just being an example and going ahead of the other people that want to do the same. So unless we're always in phase one, there's no way we can lead our team. That's the foundation. And whenever we see our team struggling, like we need to check ourselves, like, am I being the proper example? Am I doing all those things that you mentioned in layer one? Absolutely. And I think, Audrey, you always mentioned to me when you first started and you were, you know, you were doing really well in your business and your coaches weren't quite getting it or you're having a hard time. And what was the best piece of advice you got from, who was it? Um, oh, that Nathan corporate Farnsworth. Nathan Farnsworth. What did he tell you? Keep doing you. <laughs> Keep doing you. Keep doing you. That is you. always the answer. Whenever I struggled, the number one piece of advice I'd get from Christina Delgado or Becky Brosse, you know, whenever I was hitting a rough end, it's like 10x your, 10x your business. Mm -hmm. Because when you 10x your business, number one, it's contagious. Number two, you, ra you raise the vibrations within your team. And like I said, number three, you are now emotionally pulling people to do their job and to lead their team and to grow their business. There's no way you're going to be able to constantly herd people. And that's that be is so important because in this <coughs> business, it's so important to protect your energy and nothing will deplete you of your energy faster than spending it on the wrong people that aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So if you <coughs> keep your energy high and you're doing you, you don't let anybody else bring you down. Absolutely. And that's another part of that. And it was on the, on the chart. I don't think I, I honed in on it, but it's being able to recognize um, those on your team that are matching your intensity yep. and are getting out there. And, and, and part of that is the systems that you guys have created within this team. I mean, you guys have a new coach training where this is a certificate you earn at the end of that. Mm -hmm. The ball's in, in, a per, in, a, in a coach's court saying, okay, I want this business. Well, show me, get out there and, and prove that action. And so you guys have built a really great culture already. It's already established for you. Um, the leaders on your team have done that where you guys have really a perfect um, foundation to get started and to build solid teams. But of course, of course, that also means starting with you. Have you gotten your certificate? Are you out there implementing everything you learned? Are you out there, 
you know, sharing and leading and attracting and doing all the things that you're constantly out there teaching, because that's always going to be the heart of it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And it's what you can control, right? Can't control Another anybody important else. thing. Another important yeah. thing. You can't control anybody else, but you can control yourself. And like Kim Carver likes to say, control the controllable. Yeah, and it and takes time. Right. It takes time to discipline yourself in layer one. It yeah. does. It does. And I think that a lot of times we rush it too. Like we think that, oh, I need to build a team. I need to build a team. And then as soon as you get like one or two coaches, all of a sudden you stop running your business and you're just 100% into these two people. And, and one of two things happen. These people may not take off right away mm -hmm. or you stop recruiting new people because you're honing in on these two and you want to make them so successful because you feel like it's your responsibility. Um, and, and then I, I think that's where the burnout happens and that's where a lot of people get paralyzed. Yeah. Until you're strong in layer one, you can't move on because you, you're not the type of person that can handle a team yet. Yeah, that, that was strong right there. You're not a person that can handle a team yet. Very true. So anybody have any comments or questions or anything? Me. Go ahead. Hi, thank you so much. Monica, for you're welcome. I'm trying to look for who it is. Time with us. I'm trying to look for myself. Here. <laughs> oh, there you are, Jenny. I see you, girl. <laughs> I'm like, where am I? I can't see. I can't see myself. Um, Audrey knows probably where I'm gonna go with this, but I was able to write down just a few things from layer one. What would you suggest for someone who is doing layer one? you know, figured out layer one and has parts of layer two, but then layer three is not there. Like where, where, like if you see yourself kind of doing some of everything, like do you just mm -hmm. cut two and three off and go straight back to one? Um, if I'm understanding your, your question correctly, I think that, oh, I almost, I almost barely feel like I'm living in layer three yet. You know, it's, and it's funny that I've, I've reached a certain level in my business, but really getting out there and finding people that are independent and running their own thing and all it's, it's hard. It takes time. Um, I think that you still see yourself kind of doing some of layer three and layer two and all that. But what I really wanted to get across here, it's not that one is right or wrong, or you got to jump back to the other if you haven't finished. It's not that it's that how important it is to be yourself before anything, you know, before anybody else. Mm -hmm. And really that's what's going to create the effect to start building a team. And then once you have a team, always start building leaders, you know, the next level up. But the first one is the most important because that's the one you can control. And that's the one that's going to be the face of your business. The one that your coaches are going to see and what's going to keep growing your team as well. Because you can never stop growing your team, right? You can never stop recruiting. You can never stop going out there and adding new coaches and new blood to your team. Got that makes sense? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Was this helpful? Hi. Hi. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Here, go for it. Thank you so much for this. Um, You're welcome. This is probably the first time I've seen something at this level, and it makes so much sense. And um, it's definitely layers and if we don't take care of ourselves and solidify ourselves it's difficult to um support our team so thank you so much for that um one question in relation to the stories you, you spoke about um your fitness story your uh financial story and then your experience story can you help me understand the experience aspect of that one yeah, so your experience with um, getting started, perhaps how your coach approached you or how you found your coach or your experience with your first challenge group. You know, just explain, be getting out there and being able to tell a story about how you um, began your journey. That's really powerful because you're going to hit someone that may be feeling that same way, you know, right, right now. That's a lot of being objections too. Like I remember, I mean, I talk about it all the time. Like I didn't want to try Shakeology because I thought that it was expensive and I thought that, you know, shake, you know, I'm a Latina, I like to eat, you know, what do you mean? Drink a shake and all these things that I battle. So those were my experiences, right? And that's a great way that you got to be able to 
have those nailed down and you're there constantly on repeat because that's what's going to get people to connect and say, you know what, that's, you know, she just nailed what I was feeling. This is her outcome. Let me give it a shot, you know, and reach out. That makes sense. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think these uh, I am Team Beachbody posts are a great way for you to do that tonight. Absolutely. I hope you guys saw them. We had a lot of great ones out there. And you just, on Instagram or Facebook, look up the hashtag and whew, I think we're at like 600 so far. Pretty powerful stuff. Definitely. So anyone else? And, and just to kind of really piggyback real quick on what Elvira said, um, if you're on this call and a few of the things that I cover, maybe layer two and layer three freak you out. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I just started. Um, what I want you to take away more than anything again is that if you can nail down the first, you're going to be set and everything will start to uh, fall into place and you'll build that momentum that you're going to need to create your team and to create your business. Um, and it kind of gives you like a, a picture of what the future will look like uh, as a leader um, in, within Team Beachbody. Um, but don't get freaked out about it. You know, just kind of look at it and say like, well, okay, these are the things that I'm going to focus on. It's going to be what's going to get my business jump started, mm -hmm. and, and 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 don't be afraid. Um, hope that I didn't scare anybody off of that. <laughs> yeah, and I promise that it'll happen if you're consistent. Absolutely. I remember, I remember being frustrated. I mean, Monica and I are so similar in our careers. Like, do you remember being like, why can't I just get this to work? <laughs> when is this going to take off? But it happens before you even realize it. If you're absolutely, absolutely. Agreed. So any other questions that I can, I don't think I see anything in the, um, in the chat section. Right, well, we'll let you go. Get back to Johan and uh, your kids and your dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, everybody's like, I don't know. Is it a full moon? Tell me if it's a full moon so there's an explanation for this. <laughs> Well, thank you so You're much. You're very for welcome. Time. I think the world of you, and I learned so much tonight, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Have a great night. Bye.